Hey guys, Lamiro here, back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we're going to do, be doing a rundown of how you can tell if a champion is good or not. Yeah, there's about three or four major things that you can do when you can tell a champion is good. Um, the very first thing I do when you get a new champion, or even if you're in the index, that'll probably be easier since I don't have every champion, um, is that we're just going to pop in and we're going to look at their base stats. So besides base stats, you want to look at what type of champion they are. And then you want to check out their base stats. So someone like Foley, who's an attack champion, you want them to have at least probably like 1400 attack. Yeah, 1400 minimum for like a, if you're actually looking for like a solid hitter. Yeah. So attack champions usually have low base HP. Like this is actually really low, I'd say for uh, HP. Yeah, you can see Zavia has like 3k higher. So Foley is basically a nuker to end all nukers because he is just focused on attack. You're going to want to get him that ability off so he won't survive very many hits, but he'll be able to kill people. He does have pretty high defense, though, as you can see there. So yeah, some Zav Zavia's is a terrible one to look at. I'm pretty sure she has the lowest for any legendary. Yeah, 749 is ridiculous. Uh, so Vizier is somewhere in between. So the three main stats you want to look at, for me, it's personally defense, speed, and... Whatever their main is. Yeah, so either HP, attack, or defense is their main stat, and then you want to check out their speed. Speed plays a huge role in it, because when you're putting speed, uh, speed sets on them, it's basing off their base speed. So someone that has 105 speed and someone that has like 85 is going to be like 20 difference if you have a full speed set on them. Uh, another thing you want to look for is you want to make sure that their kit and what they are makes sense. So Jareg is a good champion. His kit is good. However, his attacks are based off of his attack. Yeah, which it blows my mind because it, it says HP, but isn't doesn't he just have an ability that like scales off of HP or something? I don't, I don't even remember. Or does he even do anything with HP? No, he doesn't do anything at all with HP. So literally... Oh, yeah. The only thing that he does for his attack is based on attack, but look at his attack. It's 683. Yeah. So he could do much more damage if he was a HP champion and his attacks were based off of HP. So that's another thing you have to look out for. You have to know what type of champion they are, and you have to make sure that if they have high stats, you want to make sure that they're based off their attacks are based off those stats as well. So you have to. So just just because it says HP doesn't mean that it's going to be damage based on HP. Yeah, exactly. So you want to make sure that they correlate correlate together. Uh, another thing to look over is that you want to make sure that the champions have good debuffs. So Spider, for example, a really good epic. You want to make sure that they are they have the big versions of debuffs. So having a decreased defense that's 60% is 100% better than someone that does 30% decreased defense. Um, same with Weaken, the 15 to 25%, it's slightly less than 100% ch uh, change. But it makes a huge difference when you're doing 30% extra decreased defense on people. Uh, the same goes for a decreased attack as well. Uh, it really makes a huge difference. Incoming uh, Bellower fans, though, so uh, all of Bellower's hits are the weak versions of things, except yeah. Bellower is a different story. He's a different breed of his own. Yeah, so Bellower is actually a rare. So yeah. it makes a big difference whether you're comparing a rare to an epic to a legendary. If it's a legendary that has the small version of uh, debuffs, it makes them extremely bad. However, if it's a rare that's doing it to everyone and they also have the small version, it's not as bad. Just because rares are easier to book and they're less likely to have an ability that attacks all enemies and does two huge debuffs as well. Um, doesn't Ethos have the weak version of Weaken? He does, so <laughs> doesn't really make sense. He has it on his A2. Yeah, it literally makes no sense. He's like a legendary champion, and he has a legendary void champion, and he has the small version of Weaken, which is why you do not build him for accuracy at all, because you don't care about that small Weaken version as, at all. Um, as we were mentioning before, though, um, you want to make sure that what they are attacking. 
So attacks all enemies, huge for wave clearing. Attacks all enemies, huge for wave clearing. And then extra turns as well is better for wave clearing because you can get back to these uh, abilities as well. Um, someone like Lissandra who buffs all allies as well and fills the turn meter with all allies and decreases the turn meter with all enemies is really, really, really good. This is probably one of the best skills in the game when it comes to arena. Oh, hands down. Well, I think it's the best skill in the game for anywhere, honestly. Yeah, uh, when it comes to arena, when it comes to spider, it's just the biggest shutdown ability like in the game. If it was only one champion, it would be nearly useless um, because it would not work on clan boss. It would not work on uh, dragon. It still doesn't work on those things, but up until the point of getting to the boss, it has very good uses. Um, another thing to look for is you're going to be looking at the cooldowns as well. So a champion that has four turn cooldowns that can be booked down, really good. Three turn cooldowns are huge. Um, for their A3s, if it's four turns, it's actually pretty good as well. Because usually their A3s are their best abilities. Uh, so another thing I wanted to mention that I forgot before is you want to make sure that their abilities can be or are 100% chance to land. It makes a huge difference when it's only a 75% chance booked compared to 100% chance fully booked. Because if a champion's only having 75% chance fully booked, you're not going to have the consistency that you want in your runs, and then you're just going to play into RNG, and you might not complete it, uh, something if it's based off of 75% chances. Another thing to look over is how many books they need for what type of rarity they are. So legendaries that need a lot of books, such as Brachis, who needs 11, 15, 17 books to be fully booked, makes a difference between him and someone that needs like seven books to be fully booked and to be more useful. But I mean, he has two cooldowns on there, which is wild. Yeah. So that could be booked down to three turns and that can be booked up down to four. And that only gets booked up to 75% chance, which is, it could be better too. And then, yeah, it's just, it's just damage and buff chance on them as well. Which is yeah, seven, 17 books for a Lego is almost not even worth your resources. No, I'm not going to be booking my brackets for a long time. Um, people, however, that can be booked up to 100% chance, you're going to want to do that. So like Fane, for example, can be booked up to a three turn cooldown and three turns is much better to do for people like clan boss. And you want to make sure that they have, you want to check how long the debuffs are lasting for as well. Yeah. Cause if you can run them like a four, three for clan boss, like Fane, for instance, mm -hmm. then that makes it a lot easier for you. Uh, another big thing is if they have a specialty, you want to make sure that their specialty is being used often. For example, for Te uh, Terrell, abilities that are very good, if they're on someone's A1 and they attack one enemy, you really want to check them out for clan boss. Uh, people that do A1 decrease attack are huge for clan boss because you want to have that up 100% of the time. So paired with ally attackers or paired with counter attackers, it, it really helps you out. They know that too, because they only made one champion in the game 100% chance on an A1. Uh, there's a couple of them. Actually, on an A1? Yep, uh, War Mother's 100% chance, uh, Man Eater's 100% chance when he crits. Uh, wait, War Mother's A1 does attack down? Yep. I actually didn't know that. It's not, yeah, it's not even a percent chance, it's she places it. Oh, okay. I, I was going, I was going to go with Padma. Oh yeah, so there's at least three of them that do it 100% chance of the time. Yeah. Um, another thing to check out is, based on their A1, how specific that skill is, and one of the best A1s in the game is going to be Allure. So you might be thinking to yourself, ah, this skill is like, okay, I guess it decreases target's turn meter. Um, yeah, it's huge. So once you get to bosses that can have their turn meter decreased, her going at 200 speed and her critting every single time means the boss is never going to get a chance to go if she's not weak affinity. Um, 
yeah, it's absolutely insane on Fire Knight and stuff like that. Her the rest of her kit's okay, but her A1 is literally the shining spot of it. So you really have to make sure, like, say if her A1 was instead on like a four turn cooldown, it would be almost completely useless. It being on an uh, A it being her A1, however, changes things completely. It all, circumstances obviously also change how that works as well. So I mean, wave wave clearing, she's not going to do anything with her A1. Well, I mean, she still does help a bit because it does, if you're targeting one champion, it's going to for sure decrease their turn meter by 25%. Yeah, I guess so, which can help. 25 yeah. can give you a hand. Uh, another thing to look out for for champions is going to be their aura. So, for example, Lord Shazar has, is it the fastest in the arena battles? Yep, his is fastest arena. I think his is just fastest speed in general, but yeah. Yeah, so um, he, you might check out his kit and be like, oh, well, he's pretty decent. And then you look, bam, fastest arena battles. And it's like, okay, well, that just tossed him up into your list a bit. Uh, other examples of that, people that do uh, defense auras for... Martyr. Well, I was going to go for the big Valkyries is back in Crypto. That's so Martyr. weird. I Martyr's, feel... is, Martyr's is all battles. I know it's stupid. Yeah, so Martyr, for example, yeah. much better than Valkyrie's. If Valkyrie had this, I'd think it would be absolutely insane. She would be straight up broken. Yeah, she would be. Martyr's, Martyr's or sorry, Valkyrie's aura actually doesn't even seem that good. Really? Now that you look at it, though, because yeah. it's, it's Martyr's is all battles and Valkyrie gets stuck into faction crypts. Like, yeah. what? And the big difference between Martyr and Valkyrie is going to be the amount of books they need in the ability that you need to have booked. So to bring down the counterattack to three turns is a must because of clan boss. You want to have it up 100% of the time. So you only need one book in Martyr. And Valkyrie, however, you need one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, she does only have two skills, but you still need to have six of them land in her A2. I mean, typical barbarians, am I right? Another thing to look over, we're just going to look at uh, Visix today because she does come out today if you've been logging in every day since the new rewards came out. So we're just going to do what we do. One sec, I'll look at her in the index, actually. Yeah, I was going to say you're going to want to do her base stats were at 50. Yeah, what was she, Dark Elf? Yeah. I only have four. one Dark Elf. So everyone's going to be getting Visic today, like I was saying, if you've logged in. So we're just going to go over her stats and we'll try to figure out if she's going to be good or not. So her speed is under 100, which is not the best. Not, not, not great. Uh, her resist is higher than usual. Uh, defense is basically where most defense-based champions are. And her HP is probably about average as well. So just going over her A1 has a 100% chance when booked of decreasing the target's turn meter by 10%. Fills his champion's turn meter equal to the amount of target loss. All right, so she's gonna be gaining 20% turn meter and stealing 20% turn meter. That's not terrible for something like Spider. Uh, Fire Knight yeah. as well. So Spider and Fire Knight is where this would be coming in handy. So you kind of want the rest of her kit to follow suit with that. So you want things like slow on her. You want um, AOE like attacks. So yeah, um, attacks all enemy has a 75% chance of placing a slow debuff for two turns. Place the shield on his champions equal to 25% of this max HP for two turns. So yeah, um, again, this plays into uh, Spider and Fire Knight again, uh, attacking, getting speed. Decreased speed on big spiders and spiralings is huge. 100% again. Yeah, 100% when booked. Uh, three turn cooldown. And then last but not least, places a provoke debuff on the target for one turn. Also places a 50% ally protection buff on all allies. And this is where it all falls apart. Because this does absolutely nothing based on the rest of her kit. Yeah. So she's not going to be able to provoke bosses. She is only provoking one opponent. And it's on a three-turn cooldown, which is fine, but it's going to be falling off that one opponent by the time you start provoking another opponent. So, yeah, it basically means she's useless for clan boss because you can't slow the clan boss and you can't provoke the clan boss. 
So literally, it comes down to she'll be good for Fire Knight and Spider. Yeah, the Allied Protect just, just kind of throws me off. Because, I mean, Allied Protect is the last thing I would expect because you're slowing and stealing turn meter. Yeah. But, I mean, I, now, it just, now it just seems like it's a Spider just because of the Allied Protect now. Yeah, that's like, true, the actually. Allied Protect, the Allied Protect threw, off the, threw, threw it off being Fire Knight. Yeah, so she, she seems like a niche champion just for Fire Knights now. So if you do need someone for Fire Knights to keep your team alive, this will be the one. And then all she does is Faction Wars defense. So her first... So her defense is higher than Valkyrie's. Yeah, so, <laughs> so her first two abilities scream one thing, and then her bottom two abilities scream, no, take me to Faction Wars all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, paired with... I'm thinking of, like, in Faction Wars, if anyone does anything with decreased speed... Because I was thinking uh, Tanix heals people if they have decreased speed. Um, ooh, fair. But that's literally like the weirdest combo to put together. Heals all allies, but yeah, it kind of is. I mean, but like I don't see any other like combinations. Um, but yeah, uh, that's just an example of how we look into champions every single time we find a new champion. Um, yeah, if you enjoy this content, toss us a like, and if you want to see more, toss us a sub.